All right, ladies and gentlemen, today I've got a Kubota L3830. Did a whole bunch of service stuff on it, fluids, filters, you know, greasing, inspection, all that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the issues I'm having to repair today um, is the axle uh, leaking all over the place on both sides. So a common issue that I run into is on these, these axles, um, these knuckles right here, there's a big old seal right in here that gets full of dirt because this all gets packed in and then it pressurizes the dirt into the seal and then it'll start to leak. And actually I took a compressed air and blew the heck out of all this. So it's not nearly as bad now. Um, and then the second place I get it is right here. There's a seal in this cover. This is your spindle, it goes through the cover and then that sandwiches together. There's a big old gear in here. Well, I'm gonna show you how this uh, gets cleaned up and repaired, uh, or at least I'm gonna try to. Um, so one thing I started with is uh, first cleaning it off. Second is taking the tie rod end off of this. I'm gonna do one side at a time. Um, I hose it down with some brake cleaner and wiped it down. And then I definitely cleaned all this with compressed air before I open it up so it's a lot easier to work with and there's less chance of stuff falling in and getting stuck um, and so from here uh, the next thing I did was I pulled this bottom cap off which is that guy right there and that lets me look on the inside and there's your bearing and your shaft and stuff and there's a snap ring so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my camera somehow and I'm going to try narrate what I'm doing teach you guys something new and um, kind of go from there and let's see if I can do this there you go okay so I'll take a snap ring plier like this one and this is for um, external which means Actually, no, I need to do internal, internal 90. And I need to squeeze these two, actually I'll do a internal 45. Let's do an internal straight. Sorry, indecisive. So many tools. So I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna take the snap ring out. I'm gonna move this guy over. It's kind of hard to see when you're upside down. Let me grab a bigger set of pliers actually. That might help me. Okay, be careful not to get this snapped in your face and take a snap ring to the face, that really sucks. So I'm gonna pull the snap ring somehow. Goddamn. There you go. Snap ring. Okay, we got the snap ring out. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this bearing. There's a shim, oh, it's a spacer shim. And then I'm gonna drop this bottom bearing, whoa, bearing and through shaft, spline on both ends. And that what that does is it transfers the energy from the bevel gear up top to this gear down at the bottom. This gear meshes with this big ring gear in here. And then it spins and there you go. So set that down. Then we're gonna look up in this tube and there's another snap ring, lucky me. And it's gonna be a external. So I'll have to switch pliers here. Take these guys, get in here. And now I've got to spread the two tips of the ring apart from each other. This is always the hardest part of all of this is this one snap ring here. And we're gonna squeeze this guy and let it 
work out without snapping and hurting somebody. And there you go, just like that. There's my other snap ring. There's another shim in here. That has to come out before um, there's a groove that the snap ring goes in and that ring it when you take the snap ring off the, the ring will come down the washer and it'll slide over and get stuck in the notch and then this whole thing won't come off so what I gotta do is fish it out somehow We got two options. We have a like a, a tip like this, a pick or a magnet. Sometimes one will work better than the other. You just gotta ex experiment with it. Um, oh, look at that. Magnet it is. Put your magnet there. That's off. So now this whole thing should just slide right off. Let me grab a big hammer. Next step, final step should be just uh, giving this a good old wackaroozy. Just like that. Boom. So there's your bearing. There's your seal. Here's your, what I call your knuckle or your uh, spindle shaft. This spot right here, I'll actually pick this up and show you. Here's your, yeah, here's your uh, seal surface. You see all this stuff right here? That's destroying that seal and it won't let it seal. So what I gotta do is I gotta take some emery cloth or sandpaper or brake clean or something and I gotta buff all this around off all the way around to make a good clean surface for this seal right here. And then what else I'm gonna do is next I'm gonna pry this guy out and I'm gonna hammer a new one in after I clean it. Um, as you can tell, it's really dirty and no seal no repair job is ever perfectly clean or perfectly perfect especially when out in the field i don't have a parts washer i don't have all sorts of things but at least it's not raining and it was raining earlier so that's a good start that's what we're going to do on this side do some inspection this doesn't look too great but it's not on a your bearing's going to sit here and a bearing's going to sit here um it shouldn't look like that but at this point, with the age of the tractor and that kind of stuff, it hasn't cracked. It's not worn all the way through. Um, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Maybe take a note of the other side and see what it looks like when we take it apart. All right, so I took a bunch of sandpaper and brake cleaner and I buffed all of this out so it's nice and smooth now. There is some pitting, very minor. Uh, when it gets extreme, it can also cause leaks into this axle and oil will come out also. Um, but it's it's way better than it was and it will probably have a pretty good chance of sealing up once we uh, put the new seal in. Um, it looks worse than it is in person. You can't even feel um, all this stuff in here. It's actually pretty damn smooth. I think it's just discoloration. Um, it's really hard to get around the back side of these. But um, you still got to get, let's see if I can get in there. There it is. Um, right up in here. Um, it, it can be very difficult to clean, but you got to make sure that you get it all the way around. So the seal get, does a good job. Um, next up is going to pop this seal out right here and hammer a new one in. I'll try to see if I can uh, film that one too. Okay, this seal right here we're going to take out. One of the things that makes it really difficult is its size, but also um, sometimes they can be in there really tight and then there's really not a good way of getting leverage to get it out. What I find uh, is an interesting way of getting these out is actually to take a punch and break the, the race of the seal or the outer casing, this this shiny metal part in the middle ring, um, and either break it and peel it inward to, to make it collapse into the center, and then it just comes right out. Um, so if you wanna watch, here you go. Um, you gotta be very careful not to um, hit the casing at all and damage or score that, because if you do that, then what ends up happening is uh, you put the new seal in and it'll leak around it. So let me try 
And actually, I kind of started it before I got the video going just so it'd be easier for reference. And I'm going to tap this guy. Keep going. Fold it in. Out the back this way, and then what will end up happening is eventually I can just kind of get in right behind it and peel it out. Let's see if I can't get it to peel out. That's a good start. collapsing it around catch an edge here if I can try to get it to peel out Here we go. Come on, come on. There it is. If you can see this, cha ching. Came out just like that. So, all you got to do is really just collapse it so it gets smaller. And then you just wipe the ring out, inspect it. It's a little bit of scuffing, but not too bad. What we'll do is we'll take some brake clean, hose this all out. Make sure you pick up all your little metal chunks. There's one right here. Come on now, like that guy. I wanna make sure that that guy doesn't get left behind. We'll hose this all out, inspect my bearings. It's always good to check your bearings while you're in here. You should feel no clicking at all. Um, if you do, you've got a problem. And that would require replacing the bearings before you put this thing back together. So. Uh, keep watching. I got a brand new seal here. Um, this is only one way and you want this metal ring to be facing out. And that's basically what reinforces everything. So what we can do is once you get it in the knuckle that you've cleaned and prepped, um, it's a very delicate process because you don't want to cockeye this thing and screw it up. We're going to kind of tap it in around if we can to get it started. And then once you get it started, you don't want to use the wrong kind of hammer and hit it too hard or else you put a dent in it and you'll, you'll bow it out and bend it. So one of the ways to prevent damaging it is to spread the load. And I'm going to use a uh, bearing, uh, bearing and race tool. And what I'll do is I, it's not going to, it's not big enough to, to do the seal. As you see, it's too small and this is the biggest one I have. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the load out. I'm gonna go one side, go to the other side, go to this side, and gradually hammer it in.
make sure it's even. And I'm gonna check around here and I'm gonna make sure, see this ring is actually a little high here. It's perfectly low there, it's a little high there. So what I'll do is I'll take this guy, take a smaller fitting and just make it flush with this surface all the way around so I know it's, it's um, uh, flush because you don't want it to be crooked. And then what I'll do is I'm actually going to take a dab of grease. Um, sorry, I have some grease earlier. You know, I'll grab a grease gun and I will coat this rubber uh, seal. And what that does is it'll help it seal along the uh, the spindle when you slide it up and in, um, and kind of give it a little bit of extra sealing power for uh, that oil to make sure it doesn't leak out. And then also that grease will kind of be an extra barrier to keep dirt from coming in. Okay, so we've got this prepped with a little bit of grease. It's all cleaned off, nice and perfect. Um, and I'm gonna do is slide this knuckle back up into the hole. And there's a couple things you gotta do. One is you gotta get this thing to seat all the way. And this thing's heavy, so be careful, guys. Once you get this guy up in there, I use my leg. <laughs> you good? Yeah, I got a little video going here. Oh, Trying to teach people. So I'm gonna get this guy kind of started here. Um, make sure not to drop it because that can't happen. Um, and you're just gonna tap it into place. Now it's gonna rain, of course. Once you get that seal and the knuckle all the way up, you should be able to, um... oh, come on now. <sighs> Sometimes you gotta use like a floor jack or something to push this guy up to where the seal seats. And then you can clear the snap ring for um, locking it into place. Now, it might be a little shy on the snap ring, but what I can do is I can get it started. I can try shove, ugh, and that's gonna rain, this ring right up in here, get that started, and then get your snap ring going here, get that lined up, and try get that up in the hole, and see if you can't make it line up. Now this is very difficult because it's way up in a hole and you're doing this blind. So I don't know how long it's going to take me to get this going. And especially with rain falling in my ear and stuff. This is one of the dumbest designs I've ever seen. I hate this. You can't see nothing. You can't get your tools in at the same time as your uh, washer and your uh, everything. It's just a pain in the butt. tools at once to get this guy in here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the oh shoot come on now
get up a little higher maybe. Um, try maybe line up the washer and the snap ring at the same time, like this, which I doubt it's gonna work, but it's worth a shot. Oh shoot. Like I said, kids, this is the worst part of all of this job is this stupid snap ring. Oh, okay, I got it on the spindle tip. It's just resting. Let's see if you can see it. So it's resting right on the tip. So I'm gonna take a hammer and smack the ring and see if it seats up in there correctly. I might get lucky. Not most of the time. Oh, did it click? Oh boy. Oh, do you hear that? I like that sound. So now it's clicked in, you're actually all set and ready to go. So what I do is I give it a wiggle around, give it a hammer. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, so good. Just oh, so good. So next fun part, we're gonna take a rag and we're gonna clean our little shaft here with that bottom bevel gear. We're gonna inspect the teeth for wear, any chips, any breaks, bearings feel good. We're gonna give this guy a wipe down. Um, and this is machined exactly the same, so there shouldn't be a up and down, but just double check. I like to pull things out and lay them down how they came out and put them back exactly the same way. Um, so what we're gonna do in this case is take this bottom piece, line it up like so. Slide it all the way up the center. Do, 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 do. Get it to wiggle around. Oh, and there she goes. Pop her in. Nice and easy. Come on. Pain in the ass. We're going to give this guy a little wiggle, wiggle. Maybe she goes in. Maybe she doesn't. Oh, there she goes. Maybe not. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. This spins all now, it's all locked together. And I'm gonna hold it here with one hand and I'm gonna shove this shim in here. And then I'm gonna prep myself with my snap ring pliers for my snap ring. Try to clean that off as I'm going here. Very hard to do one-handed. Don't tell mom I wipe parts off on my pants sometimes. But hey, she doesn't do my laundry anymore, so she can't complain. I'm gonna get my snap ring like this. Squeeze it together. Don't let it snap and shoot off in the distance or hit you in the face. I do that all the time. It sucks, trust me. Um, get it lined up, get it up in there. Ugh. Good, now we're gonna check the groove, make sure it's in there all the way. It sure is. Perfect. Last but not least, 
we have new bottom plugs. I kind of by default um, replace my bottom plug. I by default replace my bottom plugs just because um, generally they get haggard and damaged and twisted when you peel them out of there. Um, they're rubberized, uh, coated metal, um, and it's always just to me better to replace it, better safe than sorry. Once again, I'm going to take a uh, a puck so I don't have to hammer it straight on the surface. I've got all my parts and pieces in. I've got nothing missing, nothing left out. Snap rings in. It's all locked into place. Double check everything. We're good. And then I'm just gonna hammer it all into place. I'm gonna take this guy. Boom. Double check, double check. I gotta use the ins the skinnier side. And we're all done, dudes. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll take this guy, if you're still watching the video by now, and I'm gonna put this tie rod in, back in, just like so. And there's a couple things I didn't show you for you know taking it apart and put it together. Um, I didn't take it apart this front area because there wasn't uh, this isn't leaking, so there really wasn't a need to do that. Um, if you were gonna do a full blown you know cleaning up, I recommend the spindle seal. I recommend checking all your bearings. I recommend doing the O-ring on this cover, and I recommend this front seal behind this guy um, if you see it wet there. But this guy's really dry, and it was mostly just on that knuckle. Um, so I got this on, I'm gonna put the castle nut on, hit it with an impact to tighten it down. Remember there's always a torque spec to everything, but in this case, um, it's just a couple ugga duggas. It's just a tie rod end, it doesn't get too crazy on torque and whatnot. Um, the only thing you gotta make sure is that your holes, I'll get my pick, uh, line up for your cotter pin and so this one lines up so let me grab a cotter pin cotter pin like the such right here put this guy through pull it backwards fold it over so now my castle nut can't come out it's never good when your nuts are falling off in the middle of nowhere you know keep your nuts um, Last, you know, earlier what I did before the video was I pulled the drain plug here and I drained all the oil out. Um, there's a top fill plug, there's a middle plug for um, your level. Um, and so what you do is you fill it here. When it raises up the tube and spills out, that means you're done. Um, but I'm gonna double check some cleaning. It's best to pressure wash it at this point once you have it done um, or pressure wash it before you take it apart. That's even better. But you know, everything's situation based. So same thing as on the other side. And um, if you have any questions or concerns, you can ask me, send me a message, go to Kitsap Mobile Diesel and Equipment Repair, see us on Facebook, um, the whole nine. You know, there's a lot of options for you. So just let us know. Um, another day in paradise, a little bit of rain. Oi, oi, oi. Well, thanks for watching, guys.